Hey everyone, uh, Mark Blotkin here. Um, so today I'm going to sh uh, hopefully quickly show you a process uh, called quant-based marketing, which is something I've used uh, in many, many contexts to sort of uh, guarantee a set amount of traffic is going to reach my release, my announcement, um, you know, uh, a an event uh, to sell tickets, whatever I'm, I'm trying to market. It's essentially the process to mathematically make sure that I'm actually going to hit a certain numerical goal either before I even bother launching it or if I've already launched it, you know, it's something that's good to do and make sure you're headed in the right direction. So I'll try to move quick here. So um, step one is you're going to want to install a, get, uh, get familiar with a tool called Alexa. Um, so Alexa is a way of um, getting some data on traffic of websites. Um, so Oh, rather than just telling you all about it, I'm just going to show you how it all works. So the first thing to do is on Alexa.com, go to the bottom, and I would go ahead and install the browser extension. Um, uh, right now I'm in Google Chrome, but I believe they have extensions for Safari, and uh, it looks like they also have Firefox here. Um, I recommend Chrome, though. So I actually already have this installed, um, so I don't need to go through this. But then I'm also going to need to sign up for an account. Now, this is where people are probably going to start getting scared, like, oh my gosh, I can't afford this. Um, I've actually never, <laughs> I've never really paid for this service. Usually what I do is um, I allocate, you know, three or four days in my calendar around the, you know, the period that I'm doing all this research for a release um, and make sure that I have time to get all my research done in those few days because as you see there's a seven day free trial and that's more than enough time to get the info I need and then cancel the account before I get charged. So e honestly e knowing that either one of these plans is fine. The the main thing metric we're going to be using them for is monthly unique visitors. I believe that comes with either plan so um, you, can, you can honestly go with whichever one. Um, but obviously be, be sensitive to uh, when you cancel because it, it's expensive after that. Um, so since I'm already signed up for this, I'm going to close this window and I'm just going to start showing you this process. So this uh, is the spreadsheet template that I use to get started on, on every project um, and I'll provide a link to this where you can, um, you can make your own copy. So once you have this, just go to File and uh, make a copy and you'll be able to save this to your Google Drive. So there's a lot going on here, um, but I'll just I'll, sh I'll sort of explain each piece as I actually use it rather than being overwhelmed and, and going all the way through it. So source, let, let's first just talk about source. So what we're talking about here is any of the places that have audiences that we think are in line with who our audience might be for our song, company, product, you know, whatever we're releasing, um, we want to list those here. And this could be anything from, you know, a person's Twitter account, an influencer, um, to a website. Um, I'm not going to spend any time in this video showing you um, how, how I do this with, like, Twitter or Instagram because it's so easy since all the num those follower counts are public for those people. The much more elusive thing is how much traffic is on, like, a say a blog. Um, so let's use that as an example. So um, there's, um, let's say there's a music blog I've been talking to, uh, Pigeons and Planes. So I'm going to put that in as my first one. I might list a whole bunch of blogs here that I think of. And so the first question is, well, what is their monthly traffic? Um, the analogy I always use for, the, for why this is important is like, just like you wouldn't go perform or speak in a venue without knowing the size and uh, the capacity and how you know how many people are going to be in the audience you don't necessarily want to just assume every blog is a good use of your time it might be way too small it might be so big that it's actually getting you further to your goal than you thought which is great um, but you want to know so let's go to pigeons and planes website and um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to the Alexa extension that I installed up here. And you'll see it gives me a whole bunch of data. I honestly don't really care about any of this. Um, I care about the, the deeper data. So if I just click on the link here, it's going to give me the full Alexa breakdown. Again, lots of kind of fun stats, of like its rank of website, where in the world it's popular. I really only care about one thing, though, for this context, is estimated unique visitors, which is about one point, almost 1.2 million, which is great. So I'm going to copy that number, um, and I'm going to paste it in traffic. And so the next question is click-through rate. So what does this mean? So click-through rate is, I can go ahead and close this. Um, click-through rate is this idea that, okay, let's say that I've been talking to uh, a journalist at Pigeons and Planes, and I've gone through the whole process of, you know, getting coffee or getting them to hear my song or, or what I, doing a phone call. Um, 
which there's a whole strategy behind that. It might might be a different video, um, but for uh, our purposes now, we'll assume that you already built a relationship with a, a journalist. They've agreed to feature your, let's say it's a song. Um, so now the question is, if they told you they're going to write about you on Friday, and one of these articles is actually about your thing, what percentage of people visiting, which again, we now know is 1.19 you know, million people, um, which is great, what percent of those people are actually going to click on one of these articles? And obviously there's a million variables, like where on the screen is it, you know, how are the graphics they're using, things like that. Um, but uh, this, so this is where a little bit of you know, educated guessing comes in. So I usually like to be pretty conservative. Um, so let's assume that we got like a good spot up here. I'd say, you know, for our purposes, keep it simple and say there's 10% of those people. So um, I already have this spreadsheet set up to do all the math. So you guys don't have to worry about configuring this. So that means that about 119,000 people will actually click on the article in that case, which is, you know, you might say, yeah, that's, that's amazing. But the real question is, what's the conversion rate? So as you see, if I click on, you know, one of these articles, yeah, I'm reading the article now, you know, um, I had, I, I'm one of those click through rate people, but, you know, for, um, for uh, this artist or this artist management, their intention with getting this article might have actually been not just to have people read about it and have awareness, but to actually, you know, go to this YouTube page and subscribe or um, just watch the video. You know, everyone defines conversion differently, but it's some sort of action beyond awareness because at least something I believe is that awareness is, is not in itself that valuable because we can't connect back with people. So I usually define conversion as something permanent, like getting someone to join an email list or getting someone to subscribe on Spotify or, you know, something like that. So now that I'm reading the article, the question is, what percent of the of this 119,000 people quote unquote convert? So let's say for our purposes, that's like people that actually, you know, click on one of these links to go to her website. Um, so again, we're, we're going to be guessing a little bit. I would say it's safe to go a little bit higher than the click-through rate given that, you know, if I'm, if I'm reading this article, I'm, I'm probably more interested than some random person. So let's say, let's keep it low though, let's say like 15%. So again, it does the math. So now we can safely say, you know, um, that if we're on pigeons and planes, we'll, we can expect around to convert around 17,863 people, which is awesome. Um, and so what I have going on up here is, oh, actually, I sh sort of started with this, but I'll just tell you now. So um, at the very top here, I always like to start with a converted traffic goal. I'm really not a fan of like just saying like, sky's the limit. I want like as many people as possible, um, really only because obviously that's like everyone's intention, but I like to have set a certain number so we can um, make reverse engineer a specific plan of action. It's really hard to reverse engineer like as big as possible. So, you know, here I wrote 15,000. Um, let's actually make this much bigger now that these uh, numbers are big. Let's say it was 150,000 I was trying to convert. So once um, I have a number show up in, in here um, and potential converted traffic, this red box is essentially um, already calculating for me uh, how many people, you know, if I filled in, you know, a bunch of these we've gotten, um, and subtracting that from the goal. So we have about 132,000 people left. So we're about 11% done. Um, and, uh, and that's actually, that's, this is really helpful to know because now I know, you know, actually I don't need to, you know, spam 300 blogs to hit my goal. I just need to hit about, you know, nine or 10 more of, blogs of, of similar audience size um, as pigeons and planes. And that makes, once you, you map that out, especially if you do this before you launch, now that's a, that's a really doable plan. That's not you, you know, desperately going after, in, you know, desperately emailing and contacting every person you can find. It's actually just going really deep, building good relationships and communicating well with like nine or 10 of these people. Um, and then lastly, what I have in the green box is, you know, a very important thing it is um, I, if, if I leave this blank um, or if I wrote no, um, you know, it, that it's not confirmed yet. This is sort of what I, I do in the planning stages. So if I haven't actually reached out to anyone, I'll, I'll have all these all say no or be blank. And only when Pigeons and Planes told me, yes, they are going to run this, I switch it to yes. And when I do that, you'll see this green box, which is how I, this, this is the numbers that are actually confirmed. So in, in theory, like this red box can be like, 100% like I, I totally met the goal, but if it's not confirmed, none of this matters. Um, so I put yes to any of these that, 
you know, the influencer or the writer has told me they're running the story, and then I'll know that I'm I'm actually uh, this is not just theoretical. The the goal reaching the goal is uh, we're on the way to it. Um, so I hope that made sense. Um, I know this can be kind of overwhelming the first time you think about it, but hopefully if you get used to this, this is really the difference between projects that launch successfully in reaching their audiences and, and ones that don't and are just sort of like hoping and, and um, you know hustling at the last minute to get people in. Um, so let me know if you have any questions, um, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.